Well, hi everybody, Matt here, and I've got a, a pretty cool video for you this week where we're gonna talk workflow. And I am posing, especially landscape photo workflow, I am posing that workflow doesn't really matter that much. The workflow and the order that we do things doesn't matter as much as you think that it does, okay? Now, I'm gonna ask you a big favor to give me two minutes because I have something cool to share with you and I, it's totally free for you. And I think if you're into landscape photos, I think you will dig it. On April 25th, mattk.com slash landscape. On April 25th, I'm releasing a big landscape course. I'm not gonna talk about it here. You can find out more about that when the time comes. But what I am doing, I'm gonna do a free webinar every day and here's why. I went out to my email community list and, and asked for photos to use in the course because I didn't want to use my photos. I wanted to use other people's photos that, to get other people's problems. I got 2,000 photos. I, can't, I couldn't do all 2,000 photos in the course, but there were so many good learning moments and opportunities and, and things that I could share in these photos that I didn't want to just let it die. So what I'm going to do is for the duration of the course launch, which is Thursday through Tuesday, I'm gonna do a free webinar every day where I basically do a whole bunch of photo makeovers. I blaze through photos as many as I can and do a whole bunch of photo makeovers. I'll do some critiquing in there. Um, I'll do some compositional stuff. I'm actually gonna do a whole webinar on taking sharp photos because I saw all everybody asked about was sharpening techniques. There were photos that the problem wasn't a sharpening technique. They weren't missing a sharpening technique on the photo. They were missing something in the camera that really can't be cured after the fact. So I want to head that off. I want, I want to help you take care of that. So uh, again, you can go to mattk.com slash landscape. If you're already on my email list, I won't duplicate you. It's a good way. Put your email in there and that way I can keep in touch and let you know about the webinars. If you can't make it, they will be recorded. You'll get all of that information when the time comes, but that's really the best way uh, to go in there and follow it. Okay, cool. Uh, next thing here. So let's talk a little bit about the video. So this is on workflow and I get so many questions on, on the, where do I do something? When do I do something? So many people are stuck on this and I want to help you get unstuck because I think it's not really the place you should be stuck. Uh, so there are times, you know, maybe, you know, high end fashion, beauty, retouching. There are times where workflow might matter, the min minuscule, crucial little details. But for most of our landscape photos and for the size that we're gonna be printing and sharing most of our landscape photos, we don't have to worry as much about workflow and where we do things. And so that's what I wanna tackle in this video. Let's get to it. All right, so uh, I will start off inside a Lightroom. This could just as easily be Adobe Camera Off if that's where you're doing your raw editing. The, the point is, what kinds of things do we want to do on the raw photo? Where, where does it matter and where doesn't it matter, okay? As we go through here, as we go through the, the basic panel, um, highlights and shadows. If I have a photo where, where I've got some deeper, darker stuff that I need to bring out, where I've got some highlights that I need to, I need to really pull back, and I consider this a fairly challenging exposure, I'm gonna wanna do this stuff first on the raw photo, okay? Again, and that's where it helps to shoot raw because you get a lot more leeway to bring this stuff back cropping and straightening and all that stuff. I'm going to try to do that first. I'm going to try to do that in Lightroom because I can always come back and I can always undo it if I ever want to. So I'll try to get a lot of that stuff done, um, you know, first. When it comes to clarity, dehaze thing, you know, uh, that I'm not such a stickler on, you know, clarity is clarity, dehaze is dehaze, you know, good if you can get it done first. If you happen to think about it later on, it's not going to kill you. And that's going to bring me to workflow order because that's the question I get a lot is, you know, what, what order do I do it in? For example, I just did shadows. Now I can come down here and add some sharpening. Okay. And then I can go back up here and I can tweak maybe a little bit of the saturation. Okay. And then I'll go back down here and I'll add, do some, I don't have to do noise reduction because it was on a tripod and there is no noise, but let's say I had to do noise reduction. I could do my noise reduction. It doesn't matter inside a Lightroom or Camera Raw. Like, it's not keeping track of the order you did something. You always hear sharpen last. It doesn't matter, okay? You could do all this stuff and you can sharpen first if you want to. It's not gonna make one bit of difference, okay? In the beginning, I kind of talked about where there are certain times you might wanna watch out for, but by and large, where you sharpen anymore, that's, there's no more rules about this. Where you do your retouching, you know? If I do it first or if I do it last, it's not going to affect the photo. 
Um, okay. So from here, we kind of know we don't really have to worry about the order that we're going through the panels. Things that I will try to get done on the raw photo, all exposure changes, all big white balance changes. If I really, the white balance is way off, I'm going to try to get that done on the raw photo. Um, I'm going to try to get my sharpening and noise reduction done. I'm going to try to get any lens corrections and chromatic aberrations. Um, I'm going to try to get any transformations, vertical perspective, anything like that. I'm going to try to get that stuff done on the raw photo. All right. Just because technically it's a little bit better. Now, when this photo is hanging up on the wall and people are standing back at a normal viewing distance, would everybody, would anybody know that if, if I did, if I did my, my lens corrections in the wrong order and I did it maybe later on after I came back from foot? No, nobody would ever know. But at the same time, it's not bad to, to have a good technical workflow in there. I'm just trying to get you not to be a slave to it, not to think it's the worst thing in the world if you're not. Okay. That's all I want to get out here is it's okay to have a technical workflow, but it's also okay to be a little bit flexible with it too. So what do I mean by flexible? Well, I get the question all the time, whether it's a preset or whether it's a profile, all right? I get the question all the time. So does it matter if, should I add the profile first or should I add the profile last? Well, I, I can tell you guys, I, I have, I have a kind of a general rule for this, but I break it almost every single day. Sometimes I'll look at a photo and I'll want some help with the color. So I'll go to like the camera matching profiles, which only work on raw files. And I'll go to the camera matching profiles. I actually kind of like the landscape one here. So maybe I'll add the landscape one. And I can go through here. You know, you can kind of see that's before. You can see that's faithful. That's neutral. I kind of like the landscape in this one. There's times where I look at it and I'm like, eh, you know what? I personally would rather just go to saturation and HSL and manipulate the colors that way. So sometimes it's one way, sometimes it's another. It's when I look at the photo, what, what hits me? What hits me that I need to work on and, and visually as I start to do some before and afters, what, do, what, do I, what am I gravitating toward? Um, sometimes when it comes to black and white, sometimes I'll do the black and white the very, very first thing. Okay, if the photo speaks to me as a black and white, that's the first thing that I'll do. Sometimes in certain circumstances, I might not think of a black and white until the end. I'm like, yeah, let me see what it looks like. Okay, most of the times, if I'm going to apply an artistic or a modern um, profile, or if I'm going to apply a stylistic preset that's going to change the color, usually I'll typically do that stuff last. Okay, just because it's something I put on top of the photo when I'm done. Try to keep my technical edits away from my stylistic changes. Okay, and which is typically why I like profiles because if I were to do a preset, it could go change all the sliders that I just went over here and changed to begin with, where profile is a really nice way of keeping technical away from stylistic because I can go through here and pick a stylistic profile, but my sliders don't move. Okay. Okay. So we've gone through all of our Lightroom stuff. Now let's say we want to jump to Photoshop for any number of reasons we could want to do this. Uh, first thing is, is in my Lightroom preferences under external editing, I just keep the default Photoshop setting. Okay. TIFF, Pro Photo, 16 bit, 240. You can think Adobe, you can think Adobe, you can think sRGB, you can think they're all going to change. You can think if I change it to 8 bits, it's going to, you can think all you want. Ne you will see negligible results when it comes with all that stuff. But I figure why not just keep the Adobe defaults? Okay. They're there for a reason. So let's say we decide to head over into Photoshop. And while I'm here, I figure, you know, let me go grab my spot removal brush. Uh, it's got content of our technology built in. So let me get rid of that lifeguard stand. Just do a little cleanup. There's a little border patrol cleanup down here. Any little spots, whatever it happens to be that you want to clean up in the photo. Go ahead and do that stuff. A lot of people like to do it on layers. That way it's non-destructive. Non-destructive police can can, you know, I don't care what, <laughs> stay away from me, non-destructive police. <laughs> don't come beating down my door. But if that's the way you work, go for it. It's, it's whatever works for you. Um, at this point, maybe you want to do replace a sky. Maybe you want to change a specific color. Do you have got a bigger distraction? There, there's a thousand things we could want to do. Could be selection based, whatever. Maybe you want to, you know, warm the photo up a little bit. Do I have to go back to Lightroom? Well, no, I mean, I can do this in Photoshop. In fact, a lot of times I'll come to hue and saturation adjustment layers 
and I can manipulate specific colors that way because I get masks and I get precise, I get more precise selection and masking tools and all that stuff here. So there are times where I will do some of these color changes in Photoshop if it favors it, if it feels like it's just a better, easier way to do it, or if I'm already here. If you happen to have a favorite sharpening technique, well, then don't sharpen inside of Lightroom. Do it here inside of Photoshop. Apply your sharpening or noise reduction technique here. If you like that, if it feels better for you that, that you've got some key things that you like to do, get out of your mind that there's a better place for it or get out of your mind that there's a better technique for it, okay? There's not, but it is about your mood, your comfort. What, where, where do you feel like doing this and where are you seeing a difference in doing it? Because I guarantee you where you see a difference is gonna be different than where somebody else sees a difference. So your workflow does have to be personal. Again, I've said it, all I'm trying to do is get you to be a little bit flexible. You can have general things that you do, things that you like to do in Lightroom, things that you like to do in Photoshop, but at the same time, I don't want you to be stuck by it if halfway through you realize something about the photo that you want to change, I want you to understand that really that workflow doesn't necessarily matter as much as you think it does. Okay. After that, when you're done, then you're just going to go to file, save. You don't have to change name or location, but you would have done all your Photoshop stuff. Did all your Lightroom stuff first, did all your Photoshop stuff. When you get back over here, it's going to create, you'll see, it's going to create a duplicate copy for us. It's a layered TIFF file. It's got all of our layers in it. And then what I would do is if I decide now, well, you know what? Eh, maybe I want to boost the shadows a little bit more. Maybe I want a little bit more whites. Maybe I want deeper blacks. Maybe I want to pull the highlight. Whatever it happens to be, these are micro adjustments, folks. They're not going to change. They're not going to hurt your photo. I'm not damaging the photo. Okay. Same thing. You know, we, we kind of talked about where I consider, I consider this a fairly challenging experience. I consider this fairly easy. There's no shadows and highlights to worry about in this photo. What, what, uh, where I did, where I did shadows, when I did shadows, if I, if I took the photo now and went straight into Photoshop to do something and came back and then did shadows and highlights, it, it wouldn't make one bit of difference. Okay. But on a photo like this, where we did have a challenging exposure, exposure situation, we want to do big moves before, because now we don't have the full raw file here. We don't have all of the information that we started with. It's still a lot of information, but it's just not all of it, okay? Which would be hard to recover bright, bright highlights or deep, deep, dark shadows. Uh, there's no saying I can't come back over here and decide, hey, you know what? I want to tweak the white balance a little. Uh, let me add a little bit more clarity. You know, whatever, whatever, whatever happens to be as a finishing touch, um, that is where I can continue. If I wanted to add a vignette, no problem. Come over here, pop a little bit of a, a vignette on top of here and kind of finish the photo off. So when it comes to your general workflow, we're going to do whatever we can on the raw photo. It doesn't matter what order we do it in, but there are certain things I'm always going to try to do first. I'm always going to try to do any big exposure and toning. Um, I'm always going to try to do any sharpening and noise reduction, any lens corrections and any transformations. I'm always going to try to do that stuff first on the raw photo before I take it out of Lightroom or if I ever had to take it out of Lightroom. So try to do it first. Just understand if I sharpen the very first thing before moving exposure, it doesn't make one bit of difference. Lightroom doesn't accumulate these changes on top of each other. Um, it's not layering them on top of each other in any way. So if I sharpen first and then do exposure or if I do exposure and sharpen first, it's not going to hurt me either way.